Bob, do you think the drone shown on Iranian TV is the real thing? Well, I think it absolutely is. I mean, it's not something that they could imitate and fake this, this thing. I think what happened is that it was either forced down um, by hacking or, in fact, landed. These drones have a uh, programmable to land on flat ground. It just, there's no evidence of damage, though. That's, that's my question. So you think the Iranians actually hacked into the system? There's a possibility they did. This is, you know, the, the, Washington has denied it so far, far, but they can they can hack into these things and order them to land. They can override American controls. It's interesting, Freed. I mean, this is kind of a glimpse of if, in fact, this is a real drone and they did hack it or bring it down somehow. This is kind of just a glimpse into what is basically a, a stealth war, a covert war between the U.S. and Iran, isn't it? Uh, absolutely. This is something we shall sometimes forget. The United States is very actively engaged in covert operations against Iran. Uh, the drones are one part of it. They are also funding uh, certain kinds of groups uh, that operate uh, on Iran's borders. Uh, the other sense in which, Anderson, this is a, a glimpse of, a, of, of the future, perhaps, is Iran is using asymmetrical methods, asymmetrical warfare, to bring down America's advantages so that they can't build a drone but they figured out a way to hack into the system and bring down the drone. I agree with Bob, it's unclear what's happened, but because there does not seem to be significant damage, there's at least a decent chance that what happened is that the Iranians figured out some way to do this. And that's a very interesting example of asymmetrical warfare. It's what the Chinese study when they look at how to do battle with us, it's what the Iranians are obviously studying. There's also, Bob, been hacking of uh, by some, whether it's the U.S. or Israel or someone else, of Iranian nuclear facilities. And in fact, Iranian nuclear scientists, some of them have been killed in the streets in Iran, haven't they? Yeah, I think there's undoubtedly the Israelis. The United States is not uh, waging a, a, a lethal war against Iran right now. There's no authority for it. Uh, we, if there were, we would have seen leaks of this so far. So I think it's the, our best guess is it's the Israelis. But in the Iranians' eyes, we're allied with them, and we might as well be responsible. And I think, you know, Farid is absolutely right. We're seeing this shadow war um, starting to escalate in a, in a serious way. If Iran does, in fact, have the U.S. drone from an intelligence standpoint, Farid, how bad is that? I mean, somebody compared it to dropping a Ferrari into an ox cart technology culture, basically saying Iran wouldn't have any idea what to do with it. Do you agree with that? Not at all. I think that's absurd. Look, remember, this is a fairly advanced country. This is an advanced society. It's 90 million people. They are, they are producing centrifuges by the dozens. Uh, they are, you know, moving on a nuclear program. Uh, the drone is also very advanced technology that they would be very interested in. It's very recent. I think it, you know, it was unveiled in 2009. This is a big deal. I think that I'd be interested to know what Bob thinks, but it strikes me that this exposes very vulnerable, uh, very new American technology. Also remember, the Iranians now have something that the Chinese and Russians want. Uh, and there are various ways they can share it with plausible deniability. They can do photographs, they can do blueprints. So all of a sudden, they have something that the Russians and the, and the Chinese want. So guess what? The next time there are UN Security Council sanctions, the Russians and the Chinese are going to have something, a kind of series of interesting conversations with the Iranians. Bob, do you agree with that, that, that this is technology that the Iranians might share with the Russians, the Chinese? Oh, absolutely. I mean, if, if the Iranians themselves can't get into this and figure out how it works, they'll invite the Chinese in from one of these parastatal companies. They'll look at it. And this is extremely damaging because this drone had, you know, thermal imaging cameras, uh, the resolution on the photography is, is very, very good. And as we know, it's w the same drone that was used to surveil bin Laden's compound before the raid. And it played such a, a key role in collecting intelligence as it does against Iranian nuclear facilities. So, Bob, uh, I mean, countries like China and Russia, they don't have this drone technology already? Uh, not this good, no. I mean, we, we, we truly are at the best. We've been working at it for 10 years. It's been a key element in the war in, in, in Afghanistan and Iraq and over the tribal areas of Pakistan. I think this is another intelligence catastrophe. Uh, Fareed, it is amazing the extent to which the drones have really uh, impacted the battlefield in, in Pakistan, in, in Afghanistan and elsewhere. 
I think one forgets that uh, terrorist organizations, uh, you know, are very small groups with uh, leaders who are absolutely crucial. And what the drone is able to do is to exploit that disadvantage that terrorist organizations have. They're not large institutional uh, structures that can go on. So if you can target a few key people with a drone, uh, and the drones have gotten increasingly accurate, you have enormous advantages because you can disrupt the entire organization. And that's really what the, the, the war against Al-Qaeda has been a war against its senior leadership using drones. Uh, and so the drone is, you can't uh, uh, underestimate the importance of it. Uh, and this is one of the unique uh, weapons in America's arsenal. The Chinese don't have it, the Russians don't have it. To the best of our knowledge, nobody in the world has something like this. Uh, Bob Baer, Fareed Zakaria, uh, guys, thanks very much.